had this idea that we could help people out. If we could somehow raise dogs to become leader dogs, I thought that'd be really just an awesome thing for inmates to give back to the community. We had all these mammoth dudes that were lifting weights and grunted and, you know, everything was tough about them. And all of a sudden, one little puppy came walking up with the guy, and next thing I know, in that little girl voice, oh, a puppy! <laughs> and they were all excited and petting the puppy, and I knew right then I wouldn't have a problem. We took a chance on it because not everybody was real keen on giving inmates puppies. And lo and behold, those puppies came out great. And we grew that program. Now have about 90 puppies within the system in Iowa. And I will tell you, the benefits that it has for this program are unmeasurable. We've been in existence since 1939. Our goal is to empower people who are blind or visually impaired with lifelong skills for independent travel through the use of a leader dog. They range in age from 16 to 85. They have to be in reasonably good health and have a certain level of ability in traveling with a cane. And they come here for 26 days. There's no cost to them. They learn to use uh, a leader dog. And at the end, they're able to go home and travel safely and independently. It takes a very special dog to be a leader dog. So we have approximately 100 moms and dads that live with volunteers. And so, for instance, this puppy was born in someone's living room with its leader dog mom. Can they eat? They're hungry. And they took care of this puppy until he was six weeks of age. Him and his litter mates came back to leader dog. They were here for just a few days. Then they'll go into their individual puppy raising family. They will teach them basic obedience, teach them home manners, and get them socialized so that when they come back for training when they're a year old, they've pretty much experienced anything life has to offer. We oversee all the puppy raisers that are the volunteers that house our puppies. There's about 450 of them at any one time. We place the puppies, we supervise the training and provide support for that. We arrange the returns. We're all about the puppies before they're ready to become guide prospects. Our puppy raisers, private individuals, the inmates, they really lay the foundations to make a leader dog. Cyclone has to stay behind that line. It's kind of like a gun line, unless I tell him to come to me, come visit or go visit with somebody. Typically, our prison-raised puppies have a higher chance of graduating than our puppies that are raised outside. This is Darlene. She's a seven-month-old lab. She's a very loving dog. I work with her every single day. She stays with me almost 24 hours a day. She's by my side, out here on the yard, libraries, to the gym, on the unit. Obviously, our inmate raisers have more time that they can put into training. They have a passion. It's almost a competition. Who can have the best behaved puppy? Who can have the most beautifully grown puppy? Because in their environment is almost part of their status. With her, I put all my effort into it. I can honestly say I was miserable before this. And with her and with my last dog, it brings that inner peace to you like, hey, you're doing something good finally. You know, instead of destroying people's lives out there. My first thought was, I can't send this cute little puppy out to a prison. This is kind of a high medium security facility. And it was a little unnerving for me at first. We have 1,300 and some inmates. And after a visit, we decided that we would place our first puppy there. We have everybody here that's doing life sentences to people that are going to be getting out in the next six months. She was a yellow Labrador, and Maggie went to a gentleman we decided would be our first puppy raiser. He was a lifer. He'll never leave the facility. He committed his crime when he was in his 20s. And when he raised our very first puppy, Maggie, he was in his 60s. I was given a rare opportunity to help somebody else, to, to let them enjoy life to its fullest. That's an awesome thing, because in a prison setting especially, those opportunities, very, they just don't come by. He did a fantastic job. We started adding a few more dogs here and a few more dogs there, and they were coming back better and stronger than the puppies that were being raised outside of our prison program. This dog is with you 24 hours a day. These are not just pets, these are like your children. Not only were we helping a group of inmates lead a better, more fulfilling life. It creates an environment where people can do some good for society. It makes the prison setting more peaceful. They were helping us by raising our puppies to a higher standard than what we had seen. You can look anywhere, you're gonna see a dog. 
everybody's helping each other or working towards the same goal. It's a win-win situation. My first dog's name was Delas, and I got him when he was eight weeks old, you know, very small little puppy, and the dog was named after Dennis Lass. He now physically doesn't feel he can raise puppies, so he uses what little income he makes, gives that back to sponsoring these puppies when they go out to the prison. It doesn't cost the state any money because all of the dogs are paid for by volunteers that actually donate money to the program. I've had staff even donate money, and the last couple of years, actually a couple of the inmates have donated money to raise the dogs. Yes, if a $500 dog, that's the going fee, then you're eligible to name the dog if you wish and I have one or two more on hold right now. Leader comes in, brings the puppies in. They give any support that they can. Once a year, they come out here and evaluate all the puppies, evaluate the guys, give helpful hints. The rest of the time, I am their liaison, and we're here twice a month at least, and uh, can help the guys with what they need. So they need vet care, they need supplies, they need different things. We have started getting dog food from Purina so that we haven't had to raise our sponsorship fees, but the guys work with it really hard. Having a dog is a lot of work, but it's always rewarding to get a dog to a person and that this will be their eyes and help them navigate through the world. And Delas has been issued to a gentleman up in school at the University of Michigan. And now I'm in my second year of a master's in social work. And recently, I've found the need for a cane. But having noticed stigma with the cane, I chose to go with a leader dog um, and transition to that, as I find it more comfortable. When I first received a loss, he was quick to jump into my lap. He's always been a very cuddly dog. I think it's the way he interacts with me that there was a lot of loving and care given to him. When I gave up the dog, it was kind of a bittersweet moment. I was confident that he would be successful and be issued after he finished up his training in Michigan. But at the same time, you know, you're losing a friend, someone that you've taken care of and been with for almost a year. And I'm really excited that he was going to make somebody's life different and a lot better. Can I, help you today? Um, can I get a medium mocha? Yeah, sure. The prison's a great place to raise dogs. It's the staff and the inmates both are committed to the program. And, and that day that they have to give their dog back and tears in their eyes, I remind them that um, there was a day that they took something, actually they took a life from somebody sometimes, and all of that was for evil. At least this time when something's taken from them, it's gonna go for good. They'll never equal that life they took, but at least they're trying their best to make up for what they did. Well, take good care of it. Not easy, huh? Not easy at all. Let's go. This is my third one. <laughs> A lot of people want to think that, you know, if you punish them hard enough, they'll never want to come back. I've been locked up almost 19 years, y'all. The first 15, 16 years, you know, I didn't really have much to look forward to. I knew that I had five, six, seven, eight years left to do, and being around these dogs is brought a little peace of mind to me, like, hey, there's more than just being in prison. 93% of the guys that are in that prison today are going to be a neighbor to somebody someday. It's not just about yourself. And my goal is, is that they'll never hurt somebody when they're back out on the street. And so I want to treat them the way I want them to treat that neighbor. These dogs go to work for people. It helps them in so many different ways. And even with some of the guys that are here, they're kind of challenging a little bit. It brightens their day up too. The recidivism rate is about 50% across the country. And right now our recidivism rate here is between 11 and 13%. Very few of those guys that raised dogs that got out ever come back. I was raised with two parents, a good upbringing, and taught good morals. I served seven years in the Iowa Department of Corrections for robbing a pizza place. Today, I live in the suburbs of Chicago. I run canine companionship with my girlfriend, Erin, daily dog walking in the city and boarding at my house. Frank Grezik's one of the guys that got out, and now he goes into people's houses and gets their dogs, and he can be trusted. And you would not have trusted him when I first met him. I have five dogs of my own. I definitely love the puppies. So Frank continues to raise puppies for us. He's part of what we call our Puppy Raiser Advisory Committee. He helps give us the prison perspective on all of the different initiatives that we're trying to do. And he's been able to utilize a skill he learned in prison to help him on the outside to stay successful. Welcome to Puppy Days! Puppy Days is the day 
state that the prison is opened up for all of the sponsors for the puppies here to come in and visit with us. The guys are let, not let out, but they're let in to visit with their sponsors. All the dogs mixing with all the outsiders and the insiders to actually touch or pet or play with their dog. It's just a really fun day for everybody, and the guys get to say thank you, because without our sponsors, we wouldn't have this program. Together with local Lions Clubs, we are empowering volunteers to serve their communities and meet the humanitarian needs of the blind, helping to develop, deliver, and sustain this wonderful program. You will forget that you're in a prison. until all of a sudden when it's all over and everybody leaves. The inmates will remember that they're still in prison, but at least they've done something well. You now go back into a cell with two people that's about the size of your bathroom. My best friend right here. Well, I got both my best friends in here. If you don't see hope or you don't see a future, you're going to be back. And there's a lot of blind people that they're locked away too. Without Leader Dog, I would be struggling my way through, still living within the confines of the walls of my house because I've lost the confidence to get out and about. Guys get these dogs, and all of a sudden, they have a purpose. And then the dog goes to somebody who then allows that person who's sightless to be able to walk around in society and actually be involved in doing things that are almost what a person with sight can do. I wish I would have got it 15 years ago when I first became legally blind, because it really just opened my world up in the last year. So I wasted a lot of years. They both start as prisoners, and they both, because of a dog, change their lives. To us, they're just puppy raisers. They happen to live in a prison. Some of them are going to get a second chance to do it right. Some of them aren't. How you doing? They put their heart, their soul, their time, everything into this puppy. You might expect that with these big tough guys that they're going to be tough with the dogs, but somebody's hands on a dog tell a lot, and dogs never lie. And there's just a beautiful relationship that they have. We touch thousands and thousands of lives by making use of a dog, and that's a pretty cool thing. It's the best program that's ever entered the prison system, as far as I know. It'll probably be three or four years before I get out. And knowing that that dog goes out there and is helping somebody it's just, it's unbelievable. There's so many stories that we can talk about that's happened to change the lives of not only the inmates, but society around our program, the relationship between the guards and the inmates, all things that we didn't anticipate were gonna happen. It just warms my heart. I mean, this is a chance to really do something. If you treat people with respect, you give back to society, you're changing lives and you're changing people. And that's what we do here. It just blows your mind what these dogs can do.